Hello YouTubers and welcome back to my channel the Virginia Bushcrafter and as you know this is the channel where we learn and we practice bushcrafting prepping and survival skills so guys today I have a question what is the minimum gear that you would put into your rucksack to go out into the bush for one day or longer. Again, what is the minimum gear? You know, we always hear this matter of about how much your rucksack or backpack should weigh. I think it varies between individual skills, talents, strengths, and so on. So what I'm going to show you today is what the minimum is that I will put into my rucksack for one day, a minimum of one day. So first off, I think the most important tool, and we always hear the important tool or the most important tool, when in, when in fact, I think all of the tools are just as equally important. So I'm going to start off with um, cutting tools. Now, the first tool that I would feel very comfortable with and very safe with is a knife. Now, the knife must be capable of several tasks. Now, the knife itself, if the knife is too big, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to do carving. And if it's too small, the knife could hinder you when doing, um, when processing wood. It could make it a little bit more difficult. Now, the medium knife that I would take into the bush is this knife. It is a BK2. Um, it is five inches blade length, high carbon steel, a 90 degree spine, and it's very, very robust. And it is a full tame. Now, with this knife, I am able to chop um, branches, large branches and small branches. I'm able to make feather sticks. I'm able to do some carving and so forth. But when it comes to, a, to your cutting tools, it can be one or more item. So my first item for a cutting tool is a knife and as you can see again this is a 90 degree angle it's a high carbon steel and it is a saber grind now my next tool for cutting is going to be a saw now why am I choosing a saw because I'm choosing a saw because it allows me to cut solid materials to a specified length. Now this is a saw that has a 10 inch cutting edge, a very good handle, and of course I always add a lanyard. So again, the main purpose of this saw is to cut solid wood to a prescribed length. Now with this saw, you can do other things as far as uh, carving out notches or sawing out notches. You, you can do that with a saw. So a saw is very, very important to me. Now you can get a smaller saw. I have smaller saws, but at a minimum, if I'm gonna go into the bush for one day, 
or longer. This is going to be my saw. The next cutting item that I would take into the bush is a hatchet. Why a hatchet? It's portable. It's good for splitting medium and small logs. It's going to uh, allow me to process game, you know, cleavering game or uh, splitting the pelvis. It's going to allow me to make and uh, pound uh, uh, tent stakes. It's going to help me keep a fire going by being able to chop, up, chop off branches. I'll be able to split fairly thick branches. Um, I'll be able to chop off uh, chop off large logs as well as debark a tree. In addition, I'll be able to clear overgrown vegetation and over um, extending branches. You know, and again, I can use it for a hammer. I can make kindling out of it. And you can go so far as to uh, do some wood carving, you know, making sp uh, spoons, bowls, or notches. So the hatchet that I chose is a 13 inch S wing hatchet, a three inch cutting blade, a convex grind. Again, use it for a hammer, pound stakes. So this is a uh, just as equally important to me as a knife and a saw. The last cutting tool that I would take into the bush with me is a multi-tool. This multi-tool has a knife blade, it has a Phillips screwdriver, pair of scissors, a file, serrated edge, a saw, a flathead screwdriver with a bottle opener, and just a regular flathead. Here is the scissors, the Phillips screwdriver, and here is the blade. The saw, common head screwdriver, again another common head screwdriver with a bottle opener, and a blade that is serrated. And of course, pair pliers and wire cutter. So that one item has turned into four items because that is what I prefer to take into the bush for at least a day or longer, uh, a knife, a saw, a hatchet, and a multitude. Now the next thing that I would take into the bush is something that is combustible. That being a ferrous sim rod. Now this ferrous sim rod here, this is a very nice ferrous sim rod. If you notice, Fair sim rod right here. And then there's just a rod of magnesium. And the handle itself is made of fat wood. So this is everything I need to start a fire. And it comes with a striker as well. The lanyard, again, 550 paracord seven strands inside of it 
can be used for fishing, trapping, and other uses. Now the great thing about this fair sim rod is that, is that it's gonna allow me to make a fire. That's the, most, that's the purpose of it. So that I can disinfect water, I can cook, and I can even use that fire as a rescue signal. And most of all, that fire is going to add comfort and security. And the good thing about this fair sim rod, hot sparks even if it's wet. If this is wet, you're still gonna get sparks. So as far as this is my combustible tool. And as I said, as a minimum, I will always take a lighter as backup and waterproof matches. However, I will only use a lighter and matches as a last resort in the event this is lost or misplaced for whatever reason. So that is my combustibles. The next item that I would carry into the woods is cover, starting with the clothes that I have on. That is my first line of cover. Now the second thing I'm gonna have as far as cover is a reusable emergency space blanket that is mylar and I prefer to have it orange so that this can be used as a signal as well. This mylar emergency space blanket is five by seven. It can be used as an A-frame. It can be used as a lean to. But what this is going to do for me, it is going to give me something to sleep under. The next item I'm going to carry for cover is a bivy bag. Now this bivy bag is rolled up and I have um, rubber bands around it. And also there's paracord around it. But this is going to provide me with something to sleep in. And again, this is my lard on the inside, and this is large enough to accommodate two individuals. The next thing I'm gonna have for cover is a bedroll. This bedroll will allow me to stay off the ground. So the, the coldness would not remove the heat from my body. So with an emergency space blanket, I have something to sleep under. I have a bivy bag to sleep in and I have a bedroll to sleep on. Now the next thing that I'm going to carry into the bush for one day or longer is cordage. Yes, it is going to be cordage. So what I carry would be a minimum, a minimum of 100 feet of 550 paracord. Now this is a brand new hank of paracord, but what I take into the bush is four 25 feet hanks of paracord. The paracord has seven strands in it, and again, you can use it for many things, fishing, trapping, and so on, as well as being used as tender. But you also can use this 
to build a shelter. You can repair your gear. You can uh, lash uh, wood together. So this is very, very important going into the bush, as well as bank line. This is number 36 bank line, and I do the same thing. 100 feet of bank line cut into four pieces, 25 feet each. And this bank line, again, it binds very well, can be used for lashing. Um, sometimes it's even much more feasible to use the bank line as opposed to the paracord. The next item that I would carry into the bush deals with my container. Now a container can actually be your rucksack or your backpack, something to store something in. But in my case, if I'm going out for a day or longer, I'm going to carry a metal canteen that is a single wall. If your canteen or container is not robust enough to handle the fire, I would not take it. What I take with me starting out is a 40 ounce clean canteen. 40 ounce clean canteen with a wide mouth. It also comes with a nesting cup. Which I can boil water. I can boil soup and so forth. The nesting cup, the uh, clean canteen fits directly into the nesting cup. Now, when I am boiling water, I'm gonna purify water. I also have a bottle hanger. This bottle hanger just fits directly into the clean canteen. I put this on the fire and then I can lift it off the fire with a stick or something. Just lift it off the fire and let it cool. So this is part of my container. In addition, one item turns into two items. I also carry a full fledged mess kit. Now with this mess kit, here is a 32 ounce canteen that you that I can boil water on as well. Not a wide mouth, but it is a single wall 32 ounce canteen. It has a nesting cup as well. And the canteen fits directly into the nesting cup. In addition, there is a stove. This stove allows me to cook. I can take the stove and set the canteen, the cup, the nesting cup directly on, on top of it. And with the opening, I can feed twigs. I can feed twigs directly into the opening. As well as I can heat the canteen heat the canteen up on here as well. So again, containers, 
can be used in the fire, used to disinfect water, boil the water, cook food, and one of them is a wide mouth, and they must be single wall. Also, I want to mention that the nesting cup itself, there is a lid. So you have a full mess kit with you. This just nicely fits together as one unit. So again, just to go over the items so far, it's my cutting tools. My knife, my saw, my hatchet, my combustibles, my fair sim rod, matches and lighter, cover, I'm going to have a emergency, uh, reusable emergency space blanket, mylar, orange, as well as a bivy sack that I can sleep in and a bedroll that I can sleep on. And then I'm going to have the cordage, 550 paracord, as well as bank line number 36. I'm going to have 100 feet cut into four sections of 25, same here, 100 feet. Four sections cut into 25 feet. And then I'm going to have my container. A 40 ounce with a nesting cup, a bottle hanger, as well as a cooking set. 32 ounce canteen, nesting cup, a stove, and a lid. These are items that I carry as a minimum if I'm going into the bush for one day. All right guys, the next item that I would carry into the bush for one day or longer is a bandana. Now this bandana is 100% cotton and this allows me, if necessary, to make char cloth. The bandana also, if I cut it into strips, it can be used as a bandage. I can use the bandana for washing up, carrying or binding uh, firewood. And it's also good, it's a good head covering uh, to protect me from the sun, as well as something to cool me off by just going to the creek dipping into some water or pouring some water from my canteen and wrapping it around my neck or just draping it over my head. Now, I carry specifically an orange bandana. This bandana also can be used as a signaling device as well as a marker. I can hang this up on a tree and I can go out and explore the area, just keeping this in sight, going out 20, 40, 20 or 40 yards, north, south, east to west. But as long as I can see this orange bandana, I won't have a problem getting back to my camp. Now, I prefer or require to have a bandana that is very large. On two sides is 36, I mean, yes, 36 inches, and on the top, it is 54 inches. It's a very, very large bandana, as you can see. Also, on this particular bandana, it's very educational. 
it has information about water, signaling, navigation, uh, shelter, fire, knots, and so forth. So this is a very, very good tool. And this is one of the things that always go, goes with me into the bush. My next item is cargo tape. Yes, cargo tape. Cargo tape? Yes. My cargo tape is a two inch roll of Gorilla Tape. And this is something I wouldn't skimp on. Good cargo tape. Two inch roll of Gorilla Tape. This tape can be used as first aid. If you cut yourself, you can actually use it as a band-aid. Um, it can be used for tarp or tent repair, clothing repair as well. Now here is the, the roll of Gorilla Tape that I take with me. I've removed it from its original packaging or roll and just rolled it up for space-wise. I've used it as far as repairing shoes while, while out in the bit, out in the bush. Also, this paracord can be used as tender. As I have a spare piece that is white, I carry it with me. You just unroll this, strike the sticky, sticky uh, side of it with a ferrous serum rod, and you can have fire that lasts a while. So again, the cordage is Gorilla Tape, two inches, two inch width. The next item that I'm going to take into the bush on a one day trip or longer, something for navigation, a compass. A compass, yes, it does take practice, but just going out in the bush and practicing, you know, just trying to go in a straight line, get your bearing or an asthmic, and just try to go into a straight line. But the good thing about this compass that I have is that it has a mirror. And this mirror can be used for signaling. It can be used for signaling it also can be used for looking for ticks or cut areas that uh, can't be seen without the aid of a mirror. So, yeah, this is uh, something that is very good. A compass. These are just things at a minimum. The next thing I'm going to take into the bush as a minimum is a candle. And when I say candle, I don't literally, literally mean a candle, but a headlamp. A headlamp that allows me to use both of my hands. It has a, let's see, multi brightness. And it also has a flash. Now this light can be used to attract fish or um, stop a frog right in this trap. This one also has, it lights up green, which is very good if you're hunting for tracking blood. So that is my candle. Another thing that's very important is a first aid kit. At a minimum, take a first aid kit. You never know when you will need that first aid kit. Now, one thing that I don't have with me, I'm going to add, is a cloth cell needle. That cloth cell needle can be used for tent repair, punching holes uh, in something, uh, and it will perform as an awl. You can use it for uh, picking out a thorn, a splinter, or stingers. And 
if you're capable or have the ability, it can even be used to suture. So those are some things that go with me whenever I go into the bush at all times. So again, just to recap on my second portion is a cotton bandana, cargo tape, a compass, a candle or a headlamp, hands-free, first aid kit, and I will be adding a cloth cell needle. Now again, remember guys, this is minimal. When I go into the bush, I like to carry a knife that's seven to 10 inches, which allows me to baton, uh, uh, to process or split wood easier, but at a minimum, four to six inches. I also carry a shovel. There are many more items that I carry when I'm going to the bush. But these, the items that I have just mentioned, is the minimum. So guys, think about that. Let me know what is your minimum gear that you would take into the bush for just one day or longer. I'd really like to hear from you. So with that said, guys, again, thank you for coming along uh, and watching my video. I hope I have imparted some information on you. So again, guys, let me know the, the gear that you would take into the bush. This is the Virginia Bushcrafter. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you.